Hello everyone and welcome back to the Common Sense Crypto Channel. As with you always, this is Rich doing another video today on XRP. So I hope you're all having a wonderful day today wherever you are in this great, great world. We're going to talk a little bit about XRP, but I'm going to talk about everything else that's going on right now around crypto. I want to start with this. So breaking news. The vote on FIT21 has now officially passed with a landslide victory. Bye-bye, Gary. 2024 will be big for XRP. Now, so far, FIT21 passed the House. We got to wait and see if it gets through the Senate. And there was some great talking points that came out of this. And I like the fact that they brought up FTX. Because if we would have had this bill in place... FTX would have never happened. Take a listen. I'd like to focus on one particular aspect of this bill. It is responsive exactly to the problems in the digital assets market that we've seen over the last couple of years. In the aftermath of the collapse of FTX in 2022, we need to ensure that there are investor protection rules that prevent anything from happening like that again in the United States. Under the regulatory structure created by this bill, FTX would not have been able to register. FTX would not have been able to commingle customer funds that hurt so many of their investors. Some of my friends on the other side of the aisle have spoken about protecting investors. The great irony is that they are opposing a bill that would do just that. If you believe in investor protection, if you believe we need to respond to the disaster of FTX, then we need to pass a bill that would prevent the next FTX. The status quo will not work. It did not work in 2022, and it will not work today. I thought that was great because a lot of the people on the other side of the aisle were hailing FTX. Remember Maxine Waters blowing Sam Bankman freed kisses? I mean, this is what we need in place. People cannot become victims just by investing their money into crypto. That needs to stop. This comes from Eleanor Tourette. FSC Dems say the only people who benefit from FIT21 are wealthy, non-complying crypto firms and not ordinary investors trying to build wealth, calling it the Not Fit for Purpose Act. Who benefits from the passage of the Non-Fit for Purpose Act? Wealthy crypto firms that have chosen not to register with the SEC Gov or otherwise comply with the security laws. Who stands to lose? Ordinary investors trying to build wealth. All anybody wants is to be able to put their money into something like crypto because it could change their life overnight. All of a sudden, crypto just starts to skyrocket in price. And the average person now has, let's say, a hundred grand. And that's life changing for many people. And we need to push ahead with this in the United States. Breaking the White House issues a new statement saying it will not veto HR 4763. Huge win for crypto. So if this gets passed through the Senate, the White House now says they won't veto it. It's because nobody wants to go against crypto right now. It could easily cost them the next election. That's how game-changing crypto actually is. Like I said, it's going to be all over the mainstream media news all over the coming months. Take a listen to Warren Davidson. At the end of this, he says something absolutely incredible. I rise in strong support of this long overdue legislation. It builds on the framework that my colleagues and I have worked on for at least six years, beginning with the Token Taxonomy Act in 2018. Its core is a bright line test to define what digital assets are securities regulated by the SEC and which are commodities under the jurisdiction of the CFTC. Innovators and investors will no longer risk their freedom and their fortunes by simply launching a company and raising capital. The law will be clear and regulation by selective enforcement must end. Additionally, and perhaps most notably, this bill 
also provide first ever federal level protection for self custody of digital assets. This protection, which is very intentional, mirrors my, mirrors my Keep Your Coins Act, and it's a giant step towards restoring the right to privacy and private property, protecting permissionless transactions using digital assets. In an account based financial system, that part was absolutely incredible. The right to self custody. I don't think it's any politician's business on how much crypto you have on Ledger or Decent Wallet or any other crypto wallet. Also, at the beginning of this video, he pretty much told you it's the end for meme coins. Meme coins are going to get regulated out. SEC Chair Gensler counters bill to create regulatory clarity in crypto industry. SEC Chair Gary Gensler disapproves of the FIT 21 bill set to undergo voting in the U.S. House of Representatives today. And, you know, this guy is just despicable at this point. We all know he doesn't work for the everyday retail investor. He's working and in the pocket of the big banks. It's time for him to go. Hong Kong based crypto custody Hex Trust issues USDX, a new stablecoin on layer one blockchain Flare Networks. I wanted to talk about this as well. So, USDX stakers will receive a real world yield and see USDX in ret return. The stablecoin is back to a one to one ratio against the dollar or equivalently valued assets flare native token rose by 2.4 percent following the announcement i like the idea of this also and this was the path forward for flare as well you know i have not sold any of my flare in fact i bought more along the way and i thought this was also worth a mention this is going to bring even more utility to XRP. So Flare Network will not only bridge the gap that has long plagued blockchain technology, but will do so in a secure and decentralized way, utilizing the power of F assets. So you see, integration F assets allows for the integration of non-smart contract tokens like XRP, Bitcoin, and Doge into the Flare Network's ecosystem. The system enables these tokens to be used in smart contracts without relying on a centralized intermediary, which is a significant advancement over traditional wrapped asset systems. Valuation. By enabling these non-smart contract tokens to participate in DeFi, F assets unlocks a vast amount of value that was previously inaccessible. It's estimated that more than 70% of the total value of blockchain assets lack smart contract capabilities. Utilization. The conversion of traditional cryptocurrencies into F assets on the Flare network transforms them into ERC-20 tokens. That, this not only enhances their utility, but also allows them to partake in DeFi practices within the Flare ecosystem and across other networks. Decentralization. The F assets framework is powered by independent agents, which means that the mining and redeeming processes are decentralized. Expansion. The introduction of F assets is expected to boost the crypto market significantly. It's eyeing an $800 billion market boost by integrating digital assets like XRP, Bitcoin, and Doge with DeFi, thus potentially increasing DeFi activities and value streams. Now, this is how big I think Flare is going to become. I think Flare is going to open up the doors to passive income, risk-free passive income. It's going to bring utility and value to XRP, Bitcoin, and Doge as well. We don't even know how big this is actually going to become, but I think it's going to be bigger than most people think. A lot of people are still downplaying Flare, and I thought it was definitely worth a mention.
on where we go from here. Congressman Brad Sherman, this guy is an absolute clown. Take a listen to this. But the long-term objective of the crypto billionaire bros is to create a new currency, and they've named it well. Cryptocurrency literally means hidden money. And if it ever becomes a currency, it means that we will not be able to enforce our tax laws except on wage earners. And we will not be able to enforce our laws against uh, child uh, and uh, 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 traffickers, drug dealers, and those who violate our sanctions. Now, the crypto bros have a lot of money. They make money by literally making money. They spread it around all Washington. They had Sam Bankman Freed do it. Now he's in jail. Others have stepped forward. They've got a PR campaign. The Lakers don't play at enforced tax laws arena. They don't, for, uh, 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 they don't play uh, at an arena dedicated to law enforcement. They play at crypto.com arena. This guy just absolutely hates crypto, but he's so freaking beholding to the U.S. dollar. The U.S. dollar is losing more and more value all the time. Inflation is rising all the time. This guy is like one of those people that you know is bought and paid for. America's fourth largest bank warns a major economic crash. They've been telling us it's coming because they all know what's coming. Amid the ongoing geopolitical shift brought about by the BRICS Economic Alliance, America's fourth, fourth largest bank has warned of an impending economic crash. Specifically, Citigroup's chief U.S. economist has spoken with CNBC regarding his concern for the United States and its economic fragility. He discussed his concerns specifically regarding the labor market. He noted that the deterioration of the hiring sector could have dire impacts for the country. Ultimately, he spoke on why a hard landing may be all but an inevitability for the nation. Now, what's going on with the BRICS is they are accelerating things. More and more countries are ditching the U.S. dollar. People keep thinking that the U.S. dollar is going to be the world's reserve currency forever. It's not. When, how could you be a world's reserve currency when nobody wants your currency but you? Country after country is breaking free. They want a level playing field. And I think we're on the path to a level playing field. Banking the unbanked as well. But he's also right about the hiring sector. You know, a lot of jobs out there are part-time jobs. People are working two and three jobs just to make ends meet. And now with the rise of AI, jobs are going to continue to disappear over time. And even the IRS faces financial collapse. So they're saying that the $60 billion that they got from Congress in 2022 is, is not enough. It's supposed to last them through 2031, but they said that it's going to run out before them. Honestly, I think too many people are working at the IRS. I think we need to change the whole tax structure here in the United States. I think you should pay one tax when you buy things. That's the only tax. No more filing taxes at the end of the year. No more capital gains tax or any of the other bullshit. Just when you go out and buy things, that's when you will pay tax. And set the tax at, say, I don't know, 15%. People would go for that. Because it's better than taxes upon taxes upon taxes. And this is how Biden answers back to the pro-crypto politicians that are emerging. He cancels another $7.7 .7 billion in student loan debt for 160,000 borrowers. He's not canceling that debt. That debt just goes forward. And all of a sudden, everybody else swallows that debt. The working people in this country are paying for all of this debt cancellation. Just like Bernie Sanders wanting to cancel people's medical bills, 
somebody still has to pay for it. Nothing comes for free is what I'm saying. And I just wanted to touch on this really quick. Insurance drones spied on homes, drop policies over unannounced inspections. Homeowners nationwide report sudden policy cancellations after issuers captured aerial images with drones, manned planes, and high altitude balloons, revealing issues like debris, drained pools, or moss on roofs. Now think about it like this. This is how bad this actually is. If you cannot carry homeowner's insurance or get homeowner's insurance and you have a mortgage, the bank can cancel your mortgage. And that's what I think they are pushing here. On top of that, they also want you to make expensive repairs before they offer you insurance again. This is just another way to get people out of their houses. And who's buying up these houses? The big institutions. They're buying houses now because they're going to tokenize them later. And nobody's going to own anything. And later, they're going to push all this carbon bullshit as well. You're going to have to make massive upgrades to reduce the carbon that your house emits. That's coming as well. Everything that they are prepping for now leads to us owning nothing and we will be happy. That's the path we are on. But it comes out in articles like this, things like this that people talk about. That's when you start to pay attention because they don't put stuff like this on the mainstream media news. No, what's all over the mainstream media news is the crisis of the day and what's going on with Trump and court. That's it. You have to find your news at other outlets. And it doesn't matter because all the mainstream media news does is it divides this country. It keeps people away from other people. People that watch Fox cannot get along with people that watch CNN and vice versa because they create narratives that divide people. And, you know, that's why when people hail BlackRock as being incredible, BlackRock is the company that's funding these news outlets. They control the media. They control the population in the United States. But I'll talk more about that in another video. But anyway, as XRP investors, everything I've seen play out today in Congress, it puts us on the path for crypto regulations. And once regulations come, that's when I think we will see the flip of the switch moment. But until it all happens, stay patient, stay positive, and let's get rich together. With that said, I'm going to wrap this, wrap up this video. I want to thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great night.